Welcome back, Awaken family. Thank you for joining me again on yet another installment of Awakened. To all our returning subscribers, thank you so much for your love and your support. If it happens that you are passing by, I hope you do enjoy your stay and you will become part of this Awakened family. Without wasting any more time, let us get right into today's installment. Welcome back, Awakened family. Okay, today I am shooting outside, so you will hear bird sounds. Uh, you will hear, I'm sure, cars moving, train moving, and all sorts. And of course, my glasses have just gone darker. Here I am, okay, no blue eyes. I'm still in one piece, but of course, it's the glare of the sun that's in my eyes okay so i'll have to put my glasses on guys all right so i wanted to come in today and have a sit down to ask how are we feeling how are you feeling or how are you um Lately, I have noticed that people are going through a lot. And when I say a lot, I want to touch base on especially the, the rape cases that have been in the media. But of course, it's nothing that we don't know about or it's nothing we don't know that happens in our communities. But I'm coming here with a whole point of how can we best empower the boy child to be able to be not at the very same level as that empowered girl but to be able to coexist with the empowered girl child. I think society is on let's do this for a girl child and we tend to neglect the boy child. Now we are sitting with men who are fathers, who are uncles, who are brothers, who then, in the same society, are the perpetrators. So I don't know how best can we then empower these men. Because I think it has to start from the ground being boy child and then they get into adulthood so boy to men that transition and something came to my mind that the boys are feeling left out in society in general they feel they have to fight for the opportunities that come perhaps easy or freely to the girl child and I'm not justifying what is happening to to be okay but it can be a way that these people are frustrated now if you have a girl child you no longer feel your child is safe in any place but when they are with you so it's kind of a tricky situation because we grew up knowing that it takes a village to grow a child but now we have to tell 
our girl children that do not trust any man. Because now we have girl children who are being raped by their own fathers. So it's not a matter of don't trust a man who is a stranger. Because we have uncles who rape the very same children within the family context. So that's why I'm saying it's a very tricky situation where I think we need to look at it in a new perspective to say what is it that is making these people to be like this and it's more sad when it happens in a family context where it's an uncle or it's a father because the girl child is damaged for life not that those ones who are raped outside of the family context they're not damaged but this one it's the people that you have to live with it's the people that you see every day it's the people that you you thought had your back who are supposed to be people who protect you as a girl child so my thing is we see that the same perpetrators come from families so there is something that needs to be done within the family context that needs to change. Hence I'm saying, what is it that a society, as families, as communities, what is it that we can do to empower the boy child to be able to coexist with the empowered girl child? And it's sad that only this week alone, there's so many rape cases that have been reported. It's sad that a full grown man would go after two year olds, three year olds. I wonder what is going on in that full grown mind or head of theirs. And yet we still uh, put a stigma to mental health issues. Because truth be told, we don't know what they are going through. Why are they like that? Why, why would somebody just wake up? Because my whole thing is, 50 to 60 percent of those men who rape have their own children. Do they even consider or, you know, care that one day it will be their own if they're not doing it to their own as well? So I just come. I just wanted to come here and and let's throw around ideas on. How can we best help the men in our society? How can we best help the boys? You know, if you have a girl child, you tend to even instill fear in them because you fear for them. Therefore, we take away their innocence before time. If a child wants to wear like a child, innocently so, and we tell them that you can't go out like that because you fear that there are those men who are praying already on them. But yet you think, even if they're dressed up in locks and chains, there are those perverts who are always looking at these young girls. And they're just there to steal away their innocence. And I believe that something must be going on in those minds. It can't be normal. It can't be normal. So I would like to know 
what is everybody's experiences in terms of um, have they had an encounter or spoken to someone who perhaps had done such a thing and feel maybe remorseful or connect me for instance I would like to have a conversation with a person a man you know who has owned up to their mistake who has um, probably been to uh, prison serves their time and they are out you know just to understand how it comes about to for them to actually go out and do such a thing it's sad that the people that we trust and should be trusting for them to protect us are the same people who fail us same thing with um, rape victims being victimized at the police stations you know because it's not like the police themselves are saying they themselves have their own shenanigans so it's a tough world that we live in and bringing up our kids in this kind of environment is a bit scary and we can't be there all the time with our kids everywhere they go and we are constantly fearing for their lives as well as our lives these days we are not safe walking we are not safe in our cars driving we are not safe anywhere you walk in the mall you are abducted you are taken um, to places that you don't know you are trafficked you know there's so many things that are going on you are a lady you're driving alone you get hijacked um, they take everything off yours but then they remember oh no we need to rape this person but why why there is there's so much violence around us it, it just it, it boggles my mind that we are not safe anyway but back to what I was talking about I would really um, perhaps even a psychologist can perhaps uh, help me understand what could possibly trigger someone you know to go out and violate a small child as one year two year three year old what do they feel so yeah i just wanted to come in um i'm a bit disturbed i'm a bit disturbed by this and it has been blown up or out for me uh, in these past few days at the back of my mind I knew that there are rape cases there are victims of rape there are this there is that but it's getting worse it's getting worse and we need to find ways to protect ourselves as well and also to protect our children but most importantly I think we need to help these people I hear of we need to curb crime and all these things but this is just worse it's just getting out of hand quicker than crime is if every day we had to report of a case in each province you know how many cases would that be? 
every day a person is raped, be it a woman, be it a man. Someone's rights are being violated. It's sad. Awaken family, thank you for joining me on yet another installment of Awakened. I hope you can chat and let's um, take this a bit further in the comment sections below and thank you for listening please do take care of yourselves mentally and physically until our next installment it's bye from me